Hey guys, and welcome to day nine of the Wine with Mallory Advent Calendar. I know I'm a total slacker, but there is a really good reason why I am two days behind, because technically it's 2.23 in the morning on the 11th, and I'm on day nine right now. Um, I have this thing called multiple sclerosis, and once a month I go for a treatment down to Farmington Hills and I have an infusion and I can't drink. I know, crazy concept, right? But I can't drink before I go down there because you don't want to dehydrate yourself and then they can't stick you with the needle. So then, you know, they do up both arms and try your hands and then your forearm. And that, that's just not very much fun. So I was a good girl and skipped my advent calendar for one day and I'll just have some crazy fun and make up for it um, tonight or this morning, maybe not this morning because it's 2.30, but maybe I'll do two tomorrow when I'm feeling a little bit better. Um, the wine that we are talking about today I actually haven't even tried yet. Um, it's been sitting in the decanter and Michael already drank his half of a glass, half of a bottle. Aren't these glasses impressive? That's a half a bottle of wine right there. Mm-hmm. Michael seemed to love it, but you know he's easy to please. I don't know how to pronounce this, so maybe someone out there can. I'm not even going to try. It's from Italy. It is 13%. It, I originally picked it because I was going to try and maybe attempt one glass for you guys, but uh, I decided not to. It says ripe red fruit and sweet spices, a company of bouquet of plum and dark chocolate, pair with traditional Italian dishes and everyday barbecue fare. Now that sounds pretty good, right? Plum and chocolate. I mean, dark chocolate, really. That is an easy way to get into any girl's pants, really. It's 2010. Something I cannot pronounce. So, let's give this a try. It's from Trader Joe's, but I can't remember if this one was a $4.99 one or $3.99 but I'm going to go with, I'm 90% certain it was still under $5. Smells good. I smell the spices. Okay. It's good. Let me try again. Let me think on that one. It's good. I promise you it's good. Um, I trust Michael that when he said that wine was good. Because you know what he said? He actually tasted the Charles Shaw after we've been trying all these other 399 wines and he went I can't believe I drank that for so long it's not as good as the other wines you got it babe it's a two buck chuck and it's uh, a good get you drunk wine but we're gonna get serious today we are not going to be all stupid random I want to talk to you about multiple sclerosis because I do have some girlfriends who they've been interested in it and I can type all day, I can get it out, but sometimes you really just need to have an audio of the story and maybe it'll help someone else out there who might be going through it. Maybe they'll stumble on uh, this video or my post in a search engine or I don't know, maybe it's just educational for you. So 
if you only want to talk to me because of humor or randomness, or you want to laugh at me, you probably should just skip this one. But if you want to learn something that you might not be familiar with, then you should hang out and learn. I know, very wordsmithy with my words tonight. Okay, so how did how did this start? Um, my first symptom, I really think, was when I was 16. The first thing that I, I just, it stands out in my mind, and I will never forget it, and neither will my girlfriend Krista. Uh, we were going to the mall, and I was 16 years old, and we were driving my dad's grandam. You know, how cool is that you're driving your dad's car all by yourself? Well, I was wearing my super cool, very fashionable, rad, like two inch thick Doc Martin boots, right? And I thought I was hitting the brake because we were going off on the on ramp or on the off ramp to go to the mall. And when I thought I was hitting the brake, I was really hitting the gas. So the car kind of went like this and totally could have flipped pretty scary krista will never drive with me again because of that even though you know we've we've moved past that we, I, i'm a little bit better now uh but that's okay uh that was my first symptom and it started in my feet and what's really weird is we live in michigan but i would wear flip-flops all year round because like my feet, I couldn't feel under here, but if they like rotated, I could feel like here. So flip-flops all year round. In the middle of winter, I would wear those, unless I was cheerleading and then I had to wear like normal shoes, but it crazy, right? Well, I lost heat sensation in my feet too. So I couldn't tell if it was cold or if it was hot, it was just like normal. Um, you lose like sensations, so they can prick you. One of the tests is actually they take a pin or a needle and they poke you, and then there's another a Q tip. So they want to see which one you get right and where. Like, I remember when I, I used to have numb arms and they would poke me and swab me just to see like what I could feel. Um, my next, like I started going to the doctor because what crazy wear sandals in the middle of winter because they can't feel their feet. So, you know, we just started going to the doctor and I had test after test and eh, I just kind of forgot about it because I was sick of going to the doctor. And then I went to, I don't remember, I went on some close-up trip. I can't remember if it was Hawaii or D.C., but I remember shaving. And it felt so weird that I called my mom and I'm like, Mom, we have to make a doctor's appointment. Like, this kind of hurts when I'm shaving. And it was, I wasn't cutting myself. It was just a weird sensation that didn't feel good. And so we started going to the doctors again. And uh, I remember... Um, they didn't want, I overheard the secretaries in the office at my high school saying I wasn't going to graduate or they didn't think so because I had so many doctor's appointments, so many absences, and you only get so many when you, you're in high school. And I started freaking out, like, really? Are they, I'm the top of my class. I was like fifth in my class and I was the president and all of a, What? Like, I almost had an anxiety attack because who doesn't graduate high school because they go to the doctor too much? Like, that's not the kid's fault. I didn't drop out and have babies and do drugs and, like, I didn't even smoke. Like, come on now. I am the class president. Your class president has to graduate high school. That's, that's just the way it works. So I graduated. Um... And then it started. <laughs> so I was, like I said, top of my class. Um, 
I think I graduated with like a, a 3.87 or something. So I, I was very intelligent. You might not be able to tell now. Like I have a, a sailor mouth and sometimes I don't know how to pronounce words like what that wine is called. But I was smart. And then I get to college and sure Kettering is it's very hard it's a whole different ball game but I did have the mind for it it was just I studied and studied and studied and studied and it just wouldn't sink in like I was studying all the time now granted I did party a little bit but you can only study so much before you're like what am I gonna do so I just I started feeling like stupid who can't pass basic chemistry who has to drop classes because as much as they study they, they can't pass someone who went from like being smart to being dumb like that's not the way life works you just you stay smart and you have struggles and and that's it no it didn't work that way and so I got this job at UPS I was an industrial engineer out there and uh, the catch hub in Chicago. It was awesome. The the biggest hub of UPS, and it was a 24-hour hub. It was so cool. Except, I lived out there, and my body just like started hurting. It it hurt all the time. My leg. I had this. I still have this wicked neuropathy down my right leg, and when I go to the gym, like. I cannot stretch. I do not stretch. I will take a muscle sprain over feeling this neuropathy pain because it makes me cry. It makes me just not want to move. There's nothing you can do about it unless I want to go back on uh, like a Lyrica or a Neurotin and gain 40 pounds that I lost after I stopped taking the medicine. I'm not too interested. It took years to find the right dose of a hundred neurotin pills and I was I was on a pretty high dose of Cymbalta too so if you're out there and you have neuropathy and you don't know what to do and you don't want to take Lyrica anymore because it gives you this crazy mind fog and you can't think and you're a totally different person well neurotin does it too it changes your personality when you get on the high doses but the Neurotin combined with the Cymbalta, it worked. It helped me with my nerve pain. But I was taking like 10 pills a day just for one thing. <sighs> Not too fun. So I just deal with the constant, it's, it's there, it, the pain's there every day. But when I go to the gym, there is absolutely no cardio. It's strictly strength training like you're in physical therapy and I don't stretch there's I just cannot stretch this leg out so my nurse practitioner was actually like well maybe you should like take it easy and, and just stretch and make sure you don't get a muscle sprain I don't take it easy when I go to the gym when I go to the gym it's like balls to the wall that's the only way you get results if you take it easy that's like saying oh okay I'll eat this ice cream cone while I'm sitting on the the cardio bike that's not how it works <sighs> so who gets it women tend to get it more than men I read it was like two to three times more likely that women get it and that's true when we go for our treatments most of the people are women and, and that, that kind of sucks um, my mom has it. She got it after I did. Well, she was diagnosed after I was. But there's only a 2% chance that it's genetic. So we just hit the freaking lottery in this family because we both have it. And I know I shouldn't be worried, but who isn't worried when you have a baby and you and your mother have this chronic illness? Like, paranoid much yeah a little bit I am but I just don't think about it until he gets older and but he's a boy so I just try not to think about it at all 
Now, they say that the further away from the equator, you they see more cases, something about sunlight and vitamin D, which is true. We have lower levels of vitamin D because we can't go outside because the heat is bad for us. The sun is bad for us. I burn more because I'm on this Thai Sabri. And my house in the summertime, I sit in the air conditioner. I try not to go outside because the heat makes your symptoms worse. It's like putting a magnifying glass on an ant and watching it burn. It's awful. Awful. So what are my symptoms, right? That's the, the million dollar question. Every single person out there will have different symptoms. And it's like a soup. It's like oh, a little bit of tingling. Oh, a dash of bowel problems. Oh, let's stir it with some you know, balance. We don't need her to walk, whatever. So for me, I remember, I think it was either the end of my senior year or maybe the, the summer after my senior year of high school, like my whole body went numb. My vagina was numb. Like how crappy is that when you're like in your prime and you're having a bunch of sex and then your body goes numb. Like... You, you can't even masturbate because it's it's numb. Think about that, men. If your penis went numb, you would be so upset. Yeah, it sucked. So my limbs will tingle. They tingled really bad when I was in my relapse and when I was in the big relapse that uh, I had when I was diagnosed. I didn't have any bowel or bladder problems with my first one. It was after my second relapse and more damage was done that I got this, like I cannot pee on demand. When I have to go to the bathroom, I like push in on my bladder to push down on the bladder to force myself to go. It's really, really awkward. Um, and now when I have to poop, it's like I go from I'm sitting here talking to you guys, and then, oh my goodness, I have to poop. And then I start prairie dogging as I go to the bathroom. Like, it's that intense. It's, you just, it, 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 it's a mess. Like, I have all, <laughs> this is funny, I guess if you're still hanging around because it's funny. Um, we were taking petitions around our neighborhood to get the roads fixed, and all of a sudden it was like, oh my God, I have to poop. Uh oh, uh oh, and we were not by our house, so we still, you know, trucking right along, and I was doing the pee pee dance, but poop dance. That that's what it was. <laughs> it was really funny for Michael, but <laughs> it kind of sucked for me. I just throwing it out there. It did. Um, it, it struck it like we were at stride right buying Michael some shoes once and then I was like I gotta go I, I, I don't know where the bathroom is in this mall but I, I gotta go it, it, you don't want to live your life like that it, you never ever know when it's just going to strike you uh, the, <laughs> the only thing that stops me from shitting my pants is that uh, the poop is like this big and the butthole is like this big. So yeah, that, that kind of slows the process down. Vision. Visit, vision is a big one for a lot of people because you get like double vision and your, your eyes can actually help you get diagnosed because you can see the inflammation when you go see your eye doctor. I have been lucky where once I got on Tysabri and it reduced the inflammation, my vision got a little bit better. Um, but it still is something that you deal with. But everybody has glasses anymore. So I guess that's that's not awful. It's That's the best one out of them all. Walking gets me. And that was one of the first major symptoms of both relapses. Like when I went from walking just straight, I started like walking from wall to wall. 
wall to wall. I couldn't walk in a straight line anymore. You thought you were, but you looked like a drunk person. And then I got paranoid because I was, I wasn't able to do that like drunk test, you know, one foot in front of the other. So then I, I started getting paranoid because, oh my gosh, what if they just pull me over for no reason? And, and he, like, I had to do that test and I can't do that test. I still can't do that test because I'm not over my last relapse. Uh, balance is a big issue so when we're at the doctor's office we have to one of the tests is you sit like this fingers out wide and you shut your eyes and they're looking to see if you like go like that which you do and then you have to stand up and do it and I can't tell you how many times they've like grabbed my belt loop because I'm falling forward or to the side like, it just has to do with where your lesions are, what symptoms you're going to have. But the walking and the balance part, the absolute hardest. Like, I remember, because I was a cheerleader, I've told you that before, but I I can't do the grapevine. You know, you go like, like that. Couldn't do it. Tried? No, it doesn't work. I just want to go dancing. I want to go dancing. I want to wear high heels again. I have so many high heels upstairs that I'm dying to wear, but I can't walk in them because my feet are still kind of numb. I'm waiting, waiting, waiting for that to go away, but I'm not so sure it's going to. Um, weak muscles. This one is difficult for, for me like if I'm standing for a long time, my midsection starts to like turn into a noodle, like a wet noodle. Um, but they do make you do this test where you like hold your arm out and they push down and you have to like show your muscle strength. And then we also do um, this test. You have to like switch back and forth. And then I don't know what this one does, but you have to like tap your arm and tap this arm and then you have to go like touch your nose I did all this today so I'm, I'm pretty familiar with it they make you walk when you're in there then they have this little like blue tray and it has all these pegs in it and a little bowl and you have to like take all the pegs out and then you have to put them back in and they time you and then you have to walk like so many feet and they're timing you to see how quickly you can walk it safely, like without falling. And I think that's all for like just the in-office test that you have to like do when you go see the doctor. Um, one of the hardest ones, especially since I'm like on the video with you frequently and when I'm talking in person, especially when I get excited, I don't stutter anymore, but the cognitive uh, delay is a little difficult because you look, you look like you don't know what you're talking about, but you just, you have this delay and it's okay because you know you have it and it's just, people just get really bored with your stories like I'm pretty sure you get bored with them sometimes um, or they think it's funny or they just don't watch your videos anymore I mean what are you gonna do right you can only please so many people so I talked about um, symptoms now the best way to describe this whole thing is like a circuit so your brain isn't like a, a series circuit a series circuit will just say it's like this and then if this breaks then the circuits broken right so you want you want to be a parallel circuit where it has like different branches so if this one's broken it can still go around the outside to get the job done it just takes a little bit longer um, so 
what multiple sclerosis is. It's an autoimmune disease and it attacks the myelin, which is like the rubber coating on a wire. It will attack it and form lesions, multiple sclerosis, and then the nerve or the uh, the wire will be exposed and it just depends on the level of damage, the level of damage on what kind of symptoms you have and how bad they are. So like when I was first diagnosed, I was down in the Cleveland Clinic and it sucked. We were there like all the time and I lived in, we'll say Flint, Michigan, and I had to go down to Cleveland, Ohio multiple times a month, multiple hotel stays. Thank goodness for the Ronald McDonald House. Like, if you have a Ronald McDonald House that you can donate to, you really need to because I was able to stay there. I think you could stay there until you're 23 if you're a dependent. And it's $25 a night. And you can stay as long as you need to. All you have to do is clean your room when you're done. You get food, you get room $25 a night you're close to the hospitals it's a really good thing for parents and children who are dealing with something like this like you need to donate to the Ronald McDonald house and keep them around they're so helpful um what was I saying I don't remember. I'm sorry. Um, how am I diagnosed, right? So, you have, I was diagnosed when I was 19, technically. I started symptoms when I was 16. Um, I had every test in the book done, like they thought I had carpal tunnel one, so I had those tests, and maybe it was a disc that was just slipped or bulging or, something I don't know and I found out once because I was when I lived in Chicago like all I had was time on my hands I worked like 70 hours a week so that I was distracted by my body because it hurt so bad so I worked at UPS and then I delivered pizzas for Pizza Hut because I didn't know anybody and I needed some sort of distraction so one night I remember I was sitting on the computer because you know Google is the best doctor out there and I just started researching all of my symptoms and then I remember just crying my eyes out I'm like I think I know what I have and I called my mom and you know I talked to my boss and they let me go home because I could not I, I, I wasn't able to walk and, and I said the catch hub was like the biggest hub it is huge and I had to walk from like our office to the other corner and get a report because you know it's still printed out on paper so someone had to go pick it up which would have been cool you know get it out walk that's nice no one wants to sit in a chair all day but no now not you can't walk so my boss was cool and she let me go home early and I, I went for an MRI. I went and talked to my family, general practitioner, family doctor, and he was like, well, if that's what you think you have, then we'll go send you for an MRI. And it was like the perfect time that I came home because I was hit with this really awful vertigo. So vertigo is where like everything spins. It, it just spins and doesn't stop. You shut your eyes, you're still spinning. <laughs> it was horrible um the worst day of my life just hands down worst day was after I went to the doctor and he was talking about vertigo and I went out to my dad's house he lives in Clio we lived in the Flint area and I went to bed just fine I woke up the next morning and it was 
everything was moving. It was horrible. I, I couldn't, I couldn't walk. I couldn't walk down the stairs because my room was upstairs. So, like, my mom, she's at work. So I called my best friend, Krista. And, like, she, she didn't get out of work until later. But I, I was like, you have, you have to come. I don't, I don't know what's wrong with me. Um, it was, it was just, it was scary, really, really scary. So I started like scooting down the stairs because that was, I knew I had to get downstairs. Like, I don't know how I was going to get downstairs, but like I had to get downstairs and I don't know where my dad was. I'm not quite sure, but I got to the bottom of the stairs. I just started barfing everywhere. I, I remember sitting at the bottom of the stairs and like just barfing and barfing and barfing. And Krista's freaking out because she doesn't know what to do. She has no idea why I'm barfing. And <laughs> I remember, I just remember my dad standing in front of me. And he was talking on his phone and then he went and got me a bowl. So I could puke in the bowl instead of all over myself because who wants to barf all over themselves? And then Krista drove her little tiny little car in my dad's flower bed so I didn't have to walk so far. So I could just like, she could get me in the car. It, and it was bizarre because I didn't want to be in the car because I was barfing. She was freaking out. And then my mom came to, and we drove to the ER. Because nobody knew what was going on. And they wanted to give me, like, a, a suppository anti-vertigo medicine. And we had a, a CAT scan while I was there. And they were like, well, nothing's wrong. So we're paying $500 for you to tell me nothing's wrong when I can't walk and I'm barfing and <laughs> nothing really uh, I don't remember anything else I just remember that the shirt that Krista gave me it was like an old dirty white shirt that had like because it must have been my dad's it had like yellow pit stains because you know how men's undershirts get pit stains and I had red like red wind bait cheer pants they were my cheer pants because that's all she could find because I, I didn't live at my dad's house I lived at my mom's house and uh that's when it just like that's when it started like the whole okay my doctor told me, he was like, if you were my daughter, I would send you to the Cleveland Clinic to be diagnosed. And it's a little bittersweet because, because I was 19, somewhere in there. And uh, in Ohio, you can go straight on the drug that I'm on. It's called Tysabri no problem they they wanted to to be aggressive and put me on Ty Sabri but in Michigan listen to how bogus this is you have to go on a not as effective drug like we'll say Avenex or Copaxone Copaxone is the biggest waste of freaking time in your life I tried it once when I was trying to breastfeed you have to go on it and fail so you have to spend the time being diagnosed. You have to spend the time adjusting to the drug so that you can fail to go on Tysabri because it's a high risk drug. So I was happy we went to Ohio. It sucked that we had to, had to drive so much, but it worked out for the best. I, I, do, I do remember going down there, you know, you have all these physical tests and you have to I had a, a VEP, a visual evoked potential, and they like put this glue in these sensors on your head and you have to like watch this black and white screen and it moves and 
they're measuring the brain waves in each eye and how long it takes and if you you move your eyes then you have to start all over again because they you, you just can't you have to focus and I had a spinal tap and this is actually uh, the funny part uh, I was deathly afraid of needles when I was going through all this now I'm, I'm okay with them but they wanted to give me a spinal tap because you need a spinal tap because it'll show you like something a protein in the fluid and that's like surefire way you have multiple sclerosis okay fine they doped me up with some drug I don't remember uh, it was some pill they went to the pharmacy and got it for me and uh, I was so high but I had to be because they were sticking a needle in my back and the girl told me oh you're too skinny I'm having a hard time getting it because you're supposed to sit up to, so they can get the pressure and but I couldn't I had to like lay down because she couldn't get the needle in between my spine it, it was interesting and um that that was just really really funny <laughs> really, that 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 was probably the highlight of all those trips just the highlight I was so high um then you have an MRI and an MRI you you go in that thing you know the machine and they take pictures for like 20 minutes and then they put a contrast into you and it soaks into the tissues in your brain and then they take pictures again and sometimes it's only like 10 15 minutes though it's not as long as the first time and I, I actually just saw my results of my most recent one today so on your brain scan the first one you'll see like white spots where your lesions are okay well when you have the contrast and it, it absorbs into your brain the white spots will get whiter if it's active and then he showed me mine today nothing is active by the way that, that's really good news um, but it, it, it's almost bittersweet because he's like nothing is active and then he like moved his little mouse and he showed me but he was like but this is dark so that that's damage not exactly the word you want to hear I'm really hoping that it's not just permanent damage on like my feet and the balance part I, I would really love to go dancing while we are in uh, Chicago and we go to our other conference like I would like to just you know be quote unquote normal for a little bit that would be pretty cool like the muscle weakness is 45 minutes at the grocery store but that's huge because it used to only be like 15 minutes after my relapse like we're up to 45 minutes or so before my leg like it they they drop they drop and drag and then like your feet go like this normally or like this I'm sorry no that's how you walk but then my feet will do this and the toe will drag on the ground so you're like take a step but your foot falls and you drag and then you try to flip it up and set it down so you just I've learned my limits I, I kind of know what I can and can't do I push myself a little bit just to test my boundaries but what are you gonna do? So my form is called relapsing re remitting. So you'll like you'll have a relapse, which is where everything just sucks, and your brain is active, and then you'll go into remission, kind of like cancer. And you're not cured. There isn't a cure, but life is good. Like I was in a remission when uh, I got pregnant. And then when you're pregnant, it all goes away. It's the most bizarre thing ever. Like, I 
forgot I had it when I was pregnant. It was, it was so fantastic. Oh, like if I could just be pregnant for the rest of my life without all the yucky symptoms that come with being pregnant, I would. <laughs> just pump me up with that hormone and life will be good. But it doesn't work that way. You have to like have the morning sickness and the baby and the ripped vagina. And then you could possibly have a relapse. So the drug I'm on, Tysabri, right? It's a monthly infusion. And we go and we can only, it can only be given by a facilities that are a part of the touch program because the risks are high. And I remember when they they were telling me about the the options of what I, I could get. And I remember because it's the first time that like I broke down and cried about like this whole thing when I was being diagnosed. Like I went through all my tests like a champ because I internalized everything. And she was like, well, you could go on like this chemo thing and yeah, okay, that, that's chemo and it's a low dose chemo or you could like do these injections and they're okay and and you could go on this drug called Tysabri but it's risky there's high risk like you could get a rare brain disease called PML which I don't know how to pronounce the real word so just google PML if if you really want to know um, it's like progressive multifuncal I don't know something that starts with now and like that's a no-brainer I'm 19 years old like give me the high risk high reward isn't that how you play the stock market too like I have my whole life ahead of me I don't I don't want to play around with these bogus drugs that you know will just make you feel okay like I want to feel good like a normal person like I want to go to parties like my college friends and just get so, so shit faced that I don't know where I am and I barf everywhere like that's what you do when you're in college <laughs> you don't worry about things you don't worry about your health like how fun is that it's not fun so Tysabri you can get a rare brain disease but it's totally worth it like if I had to do it all over again, because today was like my 64th infusion since I started, I'd do it again. And I tell everybody out there, do it. Um, you're infused, you're hooked up, and they give you your, it's like chemo for an hour. But then you have to stay for another hour because they have to make sure you don't have a reaction. I haven't had one. My mom's never had one. It's just something you do because they actually, they brought it out to the market. And then this PML thing happened. People died. And then they took it off the market and the stock dropped. Just, oh my goodness. No one wants to invest in something that kills people. Well, it came back on the market. And the rest is history. It's a, it's a beautiful drug. There are so many people on it. Um, when we go, we have to like read something, sign something saying that we haven't had any new symptoms and, and they're not giving us this drug that's going to kill us because we didn't disclose that we had this new or worsening symptom. Uh, we have to have an MRI, I think it's twice a year, every six months. Uh, we have to see the doctor before each and every infusion which is once a month so I'm healthy I, outside of the multiple sclerosis I am one healthy duck because I see the doctor every month um, if you have this antibody it's called the JCV antibody google it if you want to you're more likely to get PML. It's this. They did a study and it was called Stratify and they just take your blood and they test it for the antibody and if you have it the odds are 
you're going to get PML. And if you don't, well, you could, more likely. And if you don't have it, then the odds of you getting PML, probably not so high. And I have it, so that kind of sucks. But I still wouldn't trade it for the world. I wouldn't trade this drug. No, yeah, I can't have babies on it, but we're working on that. Um, my mom doesn't have it. So my mom has to have her blood drawn every six months just to make sure she doesn't get it. I guess it's something like you can get in your in your childhood. There, I don't, I don't know, I don't know much more about the antibody because I don't care. Like it's kind of like having the kiss of death. I mean, if you have it, you have it. <laughs> And that's all. Like, there's nothing you can do about it, so why worry? Um. <laughs> that was a. This is a really long video. I'm really sorry, guys, but it might not be just for you. It might be for other people, too. Someone who might be going through the same thing, so. Hmm. I think that's all. Oh, the side effects of Tysabri. I get this like infusion headache and it's really weird because it's not like a migraine and it's not like a headache, but it's crazy sucky. And I say crazy sucky or crazy all the time, but it's intense. Like sound, oh, sound hurts. And I just, I don't want to do anything. Like, I feel like garbage right now. I, I look like, I look fabulous. Um, you just, it sucks. I, I, I don't know. I don't want to do anything when I come home from my treatments. And the next day is pretty much shot because my head hurts. Like, it really, really hurts hurts. Um, if you're in that situation and you're on Tysabri, I know this is just generic, but Aleve helps me way better than Advil does. I don't, I don't know why, but uh, I do pre-medicate myself and that helps it not feel so sucky. Like you don't feel as bad, but you, I still have a wicked headache right now. Um, I'm hoping the wine helps with that. But, the positive is, I was diagnosed, I moved back home from college, and I didn't do anything. I was so depressed, I just stayed in my room, cried a lot, uh, didn't talk to anybody, and then I started you know, getting into my pure romance thing, and I did a bachelorette party, which led to another bachelorette party, and my husband, Michael, happened to be a friend of that couple for the second bachelorette party, and he was there, and they hooked him up with a blind date, and the blind date was me. So... The positive in this whole thing is, like, if this would have, wouldn't have ever happened, then I would have, I would still be working at Little Caesars, living at my parents' house, and that, what a life, right? That's a, that's a shitty life. Move out of your parents' house, if you can. I'm not saying that you're a bad person if you don't, but just do it. You'll you'll be much happier. So, huh. I don't know what to say, but I definitely don't feel as sparkly as this this headpiece, which isn't this awesome? Like I got it from Sears, which I'm sure you're not surprised by now. But how cute is this? It's going to be awesome for like holiday parties. I haven't showered in too many days that I don't want to tell you. 
so you know that's bad because I'd tell you if it was my number that I'm okay with sharing. Um, but I love it. It was less than ten dollars, and it's sassy. It makes me makes me happy on a day like today. And so do sports bras. I love sports bras, and. That's it. Thanks for listening if you stayed the whole 50 minutes. Uh, it's pretty important. And I'm very proud of myself for not getting emotional with you because I don't cry. I might have told you I cried. But I don't like do emotions. It's not my style. It's just not. Nah. No, thank you. So... Cheers to you. It is 3.14 a.m. So I will not be doing day 10 today. But I'll talk to you. I'll talk to you soon. Have a good night. Morning. <laughs>